Hello, my name is Anne, your guide to when animals get even. If you like bloodthirsty animals getting back at humanity, then hit subscribe at Hipposonic Speed right now for more. Now, today's animal has some thoughts about being relegated to part three of the series. It's hippos. <coughs> We'll start in Uganda. So I want to begin by stating that this victim did survive and is okay, but the story itself is pretty wild. Once you hear who the victim is, you'll understand why I went ahead and gave you that disclaimer. Um, just because like, we get upset about things. <laughs> so 3 p.m. December 4th, a little boy about two years old is playing outside of his house by the lake. I say outside of his house because it's what the article said, but really it's like half a mile away. Well, not really quite right outside of his house, but it's considered very close to home. He's minding his own business, doing what kids do, when out of nowhere from Lake Edward comes a hippo. And this is the first incident of its kind in the area. The hippo just, just scoops him up. Scoops him up like one of those tortilla chips made for getting guacamole. And just scoop the kid's entire head and body are, are inside the hippo's mouth. Just, I can only imagine his little feet are dangling out and that's it. And you know, I, I know what y'all are thinking. You're like, he's two. How does he get out of this, right? Well, it's definitely not because the hippo decided um, that he wasn't hungry. It's actually because a bystander was nearby. The man, again, pronunciations, doing my best. Bogonza, I hope, Bogonza. He throws rocks at the hippo and it startles it and it it just spits that little boy right on out and flees. Which I, I mean, it's a good thing, but at the same time, you're just like, what? You know, he's partially swallowed a little boy, gets hit by a rock and is just like, Bleh, never mind, leaves. Uh, the little boy is immediately rushed to the hospital as one is when nearly swallowed by a hippo. And he got a rabies vaccine, which... It was just interesting, interesting choice, rabies vaccine. He recovers fully, he gets discharged. This is good. This is all good news. We're very happy about this whole story. But at the same time, it's just wild. Because when you look at a hippo's mouth fully open, when it is fully extended, a lot of us could look at that and go, that thing could swallow me. So for a two-year-old, that is just, he's wild. Gosh, got me all like worked up. Okay, here's my question for you guys. What is the wildest thing involving animals that you've ever been witness to? Because I mean, this Bagone's a guy. He's gonna win every dinner party ever by being able to say, I saved a child from being swallowed by a hippo. Yeah. I mean, how do you one-up that? I mean, I guess an astronaut who walked on the moon could, could one-up it, but like, beyond that, who, who can one-up that? Nobody! Nobody! So I think the craziest thing I ever saw was in my own neighborhood. It's not anything, like, major, but um, a red-tailed hawk was flying overhead, and he ended up mobbed not just by little birds, which you can see sometimes, but a crow decides to get in on the action, too. I swear this crow is actually leading the charge. And it sounds like such a simple, boring little thing, but it was really cool to see. I mean, it was, when you see it in the air and like the dynamics of flight, it's so much cooler and just so much more intense. What's the wildest thing you've ever seen? Let me know in the comments. The next animal attack is in Zimbabwe. Templar is a native to the country and he's just out there doing his best he's giving safaris that are focused on like photography um and he himself described it as just like idyllic um his life was really really good everything was good for him smooth sailing you know um that was of course before his worst day ever at work it's saturday one of his buddies calls him up and tells him, you know, I've got malaria. Because I guess that's just like, that's their version of the flu over there. And uh, I have malaria. I can't run this 
um, river canoe safari that I booked. Can you help me out? So Templar's like, yeah, I'll take your place. I'll go. Um, you know, it's a fun, it's supposed to be a fun, easy, simple little thing. It's just a treat. It's a nice little treat for himself, you know? Um, there's six safari clients. And then there's Templar. And three apprentice guides with him. Starts out with seven canoes. They've got the tourists in three of the canoes. Each guide has their own canoe. Off they go down the Zambezi River. Everything's going well. Everyone is happy and having a good time. There's conversation, there's laughter. It's also fun. Until they come across a pot of hippos, which is not uncommon on the Zambezi River. Now, it's fine at first because they're a pretty good distance away, uh, but they are getting, they're gonna get closer. So Templar's saying, okay, we're gonna paddle around them safely you know we're just gonna give them a really really wide berth they haven't even gotten to that point when there's a huge thud and suddenly a canoe is being thrown in the air yep one of the apprentice guides is catapulted from the canoe just boom gone and the current is immediately washing him towards a mama hippo with her baby which is one of the more dangerous situations to be in at that point in time. Like, that's gonna be it for him. Templar knows that he has to act really quickly or this guy is done. Like, done, done. So Templar instructs one of the other apprentice guides, get the clients to safety. Um, there's this rock in the middle of the river. And so that's like, it's relatively safe because no hippo is gonna be able to climb it. Which, I mean, I don't know how you actually judge if Hippo's gonna be able to climb a rock, but that's a skill I'd like to have. That's a cool skill. Templar goes to get the guide that washed away. And their hands have almost touched, like Adam and the creator. Just so close, so far. Because then, whoosh, the water erupts. Templar can feel that he is he's wet he's in the river waist down he's wet from the river he's he's soaking but um waist up no no waist up it's dark and uh it's it's not wet like the river but it's not dry and it, it's warm now they don't state if this is a pleasant or unpleasant warmth but it's warm basically it's it's just a very confusing situation and and so he's like i'm gonna leave this situation he tries to move he can't move that is the moment it occurs to him. I am in a hippo's throat. Now, a hippo's bite is roughly three times stronger than a lion bite, which makes it about 1,800 pounds of pressure per square inch. Or, er, no, pounds per square inch. I don't know. It's a hard bite. It is, that is 1,800 pounds of just chomp happening. Okay, and it actually manages to get crazier from here. From the point of being face down in a hippo's throat, it gets weirder. Templar reckons that it was just like really uncomfortable for the hippo or something because he ends up being spat out. Just bleh. Again, just like with a little kid, just like bleh, gross. So Templar gets shot out to the surface and then he sees the guy that he went to rescue in the first place. But that guy's not doing so hot. I mean, these guys need to swim for their lives and they need to get out of there. This guy does not look capable of that. He has been overwhelmed by adrenaline and shock and there is no f flight or fight in him. There is only freeze. So Templar has to go get him. He's swimming to him. He's about to go into that classic lifesaver's hold, you know, where you take them backwards so they don't like drag you both down to your death. And that is when he just impact. And this impact comes from below. So yet again, he is down a hippo's throat. It's twice now, man. What's going on? Twice. And uh, this time it's from the waist down. So his legs are trapped, but his hands are free. So he's going for his defensive armament and he can't even get a grip on it because the hippo was just thrashing him around. He can't do anything. It's He basically just has to wait for the hippo to spit him out again, which is what happens. I mean, at that point, like, is it really that you're making the hippo uncomfortable or is it that you just taste really bad to the hippo? 
This time when he pops up, he doesn't see the other guide, so he figures, okay, he's either been rescued or he has made a run for it himself. Great. Now I can focus on just me. Stepler's gonna focus on making sure he gets out alive. And he starts swimming, swimming, swimming. He's swimming, making good progress. He does a little freestyle. And that is when he sees a hippo coming up from the depths, like Jaws himself, wide open, charging. And yeah, he gets hit like a, like a freight train just ran into him. He is sideways in this hippo's mouth. He's got his legs out one side, his shoulders and head out the other side. Yeah. <sighs> Luckily for Templar, adrenaline does useful things in life or death situations. Time has literally slowed down for Templar. So this is all happening in slow motion for him. When the hippo starts going down, he is big breathing going down with it. The hippo goes under, Templar holds his breath. They come to the surface, Templar takes a deep breath and tries to like hold onto the tusks because they are, you know, exerting tremendous pressure um, and attempting to rip them apart. This attack is about three and a half minutes long and it isn't until one of the other apprentice guides comes in that things start moving again. So this apprentice guide risks his life just showing immense bravery, risking his own life, taking his canoe out there and gets it over to Templar. So the, the boat is like inches away from Templar's face. Templar gets a hand on it. The other guy starts dragging them away. Um, they go to the rock that they had put everybody onto earlier. They get to the rock. Templar asks, you know, where's the other guide? And the one that came to rescue him is just like, he's gone. He's gone. I don't know if he means that he got eaten by something or washed away by something, trampled. I don't know if he got to a bank and just ran. I have no idea what it means. It sounds like he drowned. I don't know. Something happened. So Templar has to figure out how they're going to get their six clients, two apprentice guides and him, to safety. Because, like, there's an angry hippo. They are missing a first aid kit, a radio defensive armament everything's gone they've got two canoes left and one paddle uh, everything else gone and they got the one guy gone also so just things are just bad um templar's in bad shape really bad shape he was in a hippo's mouth three times so i mean we can kind of give him a pass on being in bad shape but thanks by the way templar puts it it's just so amazing because he says, my left foot was particularly bad. Because it looked like someone had tried to um, beat a hole through it with a hammer. Blah. Gross. Don't like that. But he says, this was particularly bad. And then you read the rest of his injuries and you're like, are you sure that was the one that was bad? Uh, so his one arm from the elbow down is crushed to a pulp. We're talking... It's a, it's, it's skin full of bits. None of the bits are connected. That's what it means when we say crush to a pulp. It means muscles, who knows? They're just goo now. Bones, who knows? Chips and fragments. It's just skin holding in a bunch of liquid and slush. Awful, gross, don't like it. Don't like that at all. How is the foot worse than that? I don't know. He's also got blood bubbling out of his mouth because, you know, he's got a punctured lung. How is the foot worse than that? I don't know. So the guy who rescued him rolls him over. He's got a gaping hole in his back because, you know, the tusks and all that. And he, you know, he plugs it. And I honestly think that these guides should just start taking, like, tampons with them to plug the holes because instead he's using saran wrap saran wrap from a plate of snacks that's not sterile there's nothing about that that's sanitary or safe plus you lose all the snacks templar is the most senior person there he is also arguably the least trustworthy to be making choices based on the fact that he is 
gravely injured, but he makes the choices. They listen to him. He's he's the man with the experience. They gotta get off the rock. This is like some Survivor's Island type stuff going on. They put him in a canoe, different guide paddles. Templar described it as like a spiritual experience where he just sort of like had this moment where he's in the canoe. The hippo's bumping the canoe this whole time. And he's just thinking to himself, you know, like, do I go? Do I stay? And when I say that, I am talking about, he's not talking about the rock, guys. He is talking about on this mortal coil. And he decides to stay, which like, wow, okay. Wow, I found. Apparently, as soon as he decided he wants to stay, more pain than he could have ever imagined possible hit him all at once. So, the choices you make, you know? <laughs> Turns out, they do find the guy that's gone. He didn't have any signs of animal attack on him, so... The drowned thing that I mentioned... That happened. That sucks. But anyway... The good news is, from the bank of the river there were people, and they realized, like, something is very wrong on the river. Zimbabwe rescue team gets deployed to get the rest of the people off the rock, because basically it was just Templar and the one guy getting him back to shore because of how injured he was. Plus, they have to get- they have- someone has to leave anyway to try to get help. Like, no matter what. So it makes sense because they're not gonna risk the lives of the clients, because they're good boys, and one of them is critically injured, so it makes sense to have them go. It takes eight hours to get Templar to a hospital. The nearest hospital. Eight hours! Nearest hospital! Ah. So he has several major surgeries, of course. His surgeon wasn't sure he'd actually survive, but I mean, the guy survived an eight-hour drive to the hospital, so he'll probably be fine, okay? Gosh. Have a little faith, right? The surgeon didn't just save his life. He saved both the legs and he saved one arm. The other arm was beyond saving, which I think makes sense because we just talked about crush to a pulp, right? Like we just discussed it was just skin holding everything in. How do you save that? Like, I don't think you can. There's no fixing those muscles that are now just pulverized. There is no remaking the bone after that much fragmentation. It's done. And, you know, even though Templar lived and everything, and like, it mostly turned out good, it was still so hard for him because he wakes up and he feels for one of his hands and it's not there. Like, I cannot... I cannot imagine. Like, I'm sure he knew going in that, like, I might come out with nothing. But if you came out and you felt your legs, you'd probably think, like, oh, great, my arms. But, like, no, no, not what happened. You know, he was devastated because this is a guy, he's been active all his life, and now he's missing an arm, and he's like, what am I going to do? Then he realizes, like, I've still got an arm. <laughs> I've still got my legs. I've got an arm. i got my legs. And so, you know... I think for anyone who goes through such a giant, insane trauma like that, your emotions are everywhere. It's like, not only did you get in a hippo's mouth three times, but like, you mostly came out, you mostly came out intact. I mean, that is amazing. But at the same time, like, how do you get over, like, I've still lost something that was an intrinsic part of me, right? Like, ah, so he's everywhere. So yeah. He got his physical and occupational therapy. He got that in Zimbabwe. He went to the UK to get some more. And he ended up getting a um, prosthesis, you know, for his left arm. Try to get back into life. So, it all mostly worked out. Not for that one apprentice guide and not for Templar's left arm. But it worked out for everything else. Yay? I don't know. If you liked this video and you want more bloodthirsty animal content, hit that subscribe! Right meow! I am here Sundays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Bye! And that 
is also when he came face to face with a hangry, hangry hippo. Yeah. If you want to win the game, you gotta take a good aim and get the most marbles with your hippo. Play. Hangry, hangry hippo. Hangry, hangry hippo. Hangry, hangry hippo. Those is the name of the game, and whoever hippo gets the most marbles wins. Playing. Hangry, hangry hippo. Hangry, hangry hippo. I win! Hangry, hangry hippo. From Hasbro. 